Thank you very much uh, for your uh, very kind introduction. And uh, also, especially thank you for your company. Uh, I cannot deny it because uh, this is good for kicker. Uh, but I'm not sure I can how much role I can play for China's policy making. And uh, I also thank you very much for all of you uh, to come to this room. And the uh, RSIS and the uh, UNT are very, very distinguished and uh, famous uh, schools, universities. And uh, I'm very much honored uh, to be invited to take part in this distinguished speech program. Um, very delighted to have this opportunity uh, to discuss uh, this uh, topic and to share my views with you. Uh, I'm going to uh, read a, a, a written version of my talk uh, because uh, it's going to be published and uh, translated by a veteran translator. It's, uh, uh, it's a good translation. It's much better than my English. But uh, probably some, some, some wordings are kind of uh, old style. And uh, I hope uh, you like it. <coughs> um, the substitution of uh, game play, a key word in this uh, talk for the once a popular competition. Uh, signals an interesting ch change in uh, big power relations. Um, competition in Cold War, US-Soviet relationship implies an overall antagonistic uh, contention. Ambiguity now characterized uh, interstate relations. Those among big powers in particular, neither friend nor foe, or friendly, that is the friend plus enemy. However, it's now employed to describe uh, post-Cold War China-US bilateral ties. And the stakeholder became a uh, buzzword soon after its uh, introduction by former U.S. Deputy Secretary of State <coughs> Robert uh, Ziller as a description of the growing divergence and the collaboration bond between the two capitals. The competition, or rather the competition aspect, stood out as China's rapid ascendancy since the advent of the 21st century sparked the fears of and the vigilance over Beijing among big powers. Yet, calls for greater international cooperation has also been on the rise at the same time. Thus, big power gain has finally been chosen as uh, the expression to portray the Beijing-Washington ties on a growing spectrum of issues along with the fast pace of um, intertwined intertwi rivalry and uh, teamwork. The two are playing chess game on both big chess board and the small ones. The Asian Pacific uh, being the most uh, eye-catching theater now and in the foreseeable future. essence of um, chess game. First, what is the essence of this change in big power relations? Its backdrop <coughs> is uh, multipolarity. In the globalization era, that uh, reflects a historical phenomenon of uh, quantitative to a qualitative transformation. It also symbolizes uh, a reshuffle of power structure in world politics. As for the shift to the Asian Pacific region of the focus of the big power chess game, it involves two things, namely the sh shift here of global political economic center of gravity and the U.S. pivot to this part of the planet on its heel. Why the pivot? Just for checking China's rise? Not necessarily so. 
Over half of U.S. foreign investment and the trade are concentrated in Asian Pacific region. Fundamentally, cognizant of the center of Asia as a whole with China's rise, a core element at that. Policy makers and the strategists in Washington increasingly understand that the future of American lies increasingly in engagement with Asia. If Washington intends to retain its global hegemony, it simply has to adapt to this uh, historical change by strategic uh, reorientation. That explains why President uh, Barack Obama and his administration time and again reiterated that the United States is an Asian Pacific country. And uh, Dr. Kissinger has uh, floated in the concept uh, of an Asian Pacific uh, community. Needless to say, China is a rising power in the new equation. There's the ground of the unfolding US drama. Understanding such a basic logic of things captures the complexity of the cooperation and the competition across the shore of the Pacific Ocean. Then we should not simply cry wolf over the new US strategic move. We need to put ourselves in another person's show, another person's shoes. It is also true the other way around. China considers the current dependence on the US for sea lane safety a strategic vulnerability. That explains its enthusiasm for building its own blue water navy. It by no means reflects China's readiness to step into U.S. shoes. The Pacific Ocean is uh, wide enough for two to swim, and the Chinese leadership has time and again reiterated its sincere welcome for Washington to play a constructive role in Asia. Scrutiny shows that a chess game in such a context that spells, in essence, a reshuffle of power and the uh, rights among states in a new situation. Imbalancing a regional, regional, and a global structure, uh, crying out for rebalancing or reshaping. Meanwhile, needs for self and the common development are also shouting for greater coordination and among, uh, among big powers. The new situation how big power gain collaboration demands corresponding architecture and the rules of the game to be designed new. What an urgent need is the political, economic, and the security architecture in the Asian Pacific region for ensuring economic develop cooperation and the security stability under which strategic rivalry cooperation among China and the United States and the other big powers can be carried out in an orderly manner. In fact, they are playing the chess game to contend for the initiative through serving the momentum in either zero sum or better still. <coughs> non-hero sum game, as all parties declared openly. China is the spotlight of the Asian Pacific. China's rise is now the hot topic uh, of the vast region. In this era of historical transformation now, transformation how others look at a vast, fast-growing China, is not to be decided by the portrayal of the Chinese themselves. From the perspective of contemporary international politics, this is a matter of major strategic significance for the United States and not a few Asian Pacific countries. 
even to China itself, the area of new challenges brought about by the ascent call, by the ascent calls for close attention. No wonder China has evolved into the spotlight of the changing world. Indeed, China's strategic agenda, China's view of itself and its place in the world, and China's relation with its neighbors and the patterns of Chinese state behavior are all objects of intense outside observation. As a matter of fact, China's rise in the eyes of foreigners is uh, worlds apart from that of the perception of Chinese themselves. China, a country boasting a huge population of 1.3 billion plus people, a territory of 9.6 million square kilometers, and an ancient history and culture, represents a formidable giant. Reform and opening up has forced close link with the outside world. It has also reaped the rich rewards of having harvested 30 years long double digit growth in a row. And thus, catapulting the country into the world's second largest economy. In the eyes of outsiders, China seems to be a towering tree, a world shaking side lost to Chinese because they themselves live in China and take views of the world from China. Such a big divergence in cognition leads naturally to differences over the role of China in international life. To foreign countries, China's ascent as a major strategic issue has due significance of opportunity and the challenges and the problems. The point for all the parties concerned, including China itself, is how to pursue advantages and the shun disadvantages in addressing the economic and the strategic issues brought about by China's ascendance. This is the crux of the chess game in the approach of all foreign countries a comprehensive and a profound understanding of which is needed on our part. China and America in Asian Pacific. A clear understanding of China's new international status, together with its foreign relations, come from a real recognition of China's rise as a world number two. Well aware of big gap between the United States. Many people in China are strongly opposed to the title, means that number two. <coughs> Worrying seemingly that uh, the disaster may befall on us sooner or later. Actually, it reflects nothing more than a simple truth based on power hierarchy with the United States the only single country ahead of China in terms of GDP and the comprehensive national strength. That's my personal view. <coughs> Calling a spade a spade is uh, crucial for China's foreign policy as its point of departure. Failure to recognize it betrays the fool in your sleeves. There is its denial or cover up ostrich-like is equivalent to absurdity. What is more, China is claiming the world's number two position on the wind of a strong momentum rejuvenation. It is locked in a pair of principal contradictions. With the United States in the view of Mao Zedong's philosophical work on contradictions, the number one power, the United States, is still at the helm of international affairs. For Washington, spirit is uh, willing, but uh, flesh is weak. It also it has to make a strategic uh, readjustment with necessary contraction 
has the general direction coupled with the expansion at uh, some specific points. On the other hand, China is number two on a gradual rise looming from economic to political and then to military and finally to an overall revival and uh, on a corresponding shift from a regional to global role. Small one, but <coughs> Washington treats Beijing as a principal chess player, a rival as well as a partner. The two serve as each other's chief stakeholder. A rival as well as, uh, like all others, Americans are naturally concerned about how China is going to play its role in the Asian Pacific, an issue the Chinese should ponder over and over again. The short answer is how to handle the relationship between power and the responsibility. A proper equilibrium should be sought to be sought between the two interconnected aspects. Besides America, other major players like Japan, the ROK, ASEAN countries in India have their own calculations. Russia and the President uh, Vladimir Putin is also talking about return to Asia, focusing on normalization and the foreign collaboration in Russian Far East. For them, crucial question is also how to cope with the changes and the challenges brought about by China's rise, while striving for expanded teamwork with Beijing. Needless to say, extent and the nature varies from country to country in their ties with China. So we can clearly see that of all its external relations, how much more complicated it is for China to navigate its relations with surrounding nations and uh, big other big powers. Here involved are bilateral, multilateral, regional, and uh, global relations. In the Sino-US balance of power, Two dimensions stand out, military and uh, financial. China's military modernization is picking up momentum after years of taking the back seat. But the United States still enjoys financial hegemony. The core one and the military hegemony as well are a sharp sword to defend its financial supremacy. A bulwark to fall upon when necessary not necessarily for immediate use, but sufficient for deterrence at least. The problem with Washington is its ability, falling short of its hegemony ambitions, with its mountain height debt long, most uh, conspicuous. Washington, therefore, is calling for burden sharing or leveraging powers of other nations in the form of heightened lines and enlarged partnership with a view to intensify check on China on the political and the security fronts. So much <coughs> so that some people in China have begun to believe that uh, Washington is bent on containing China to the extent of using the term a new Cold War. I personally suggest prudence in using the term containment because of its uh, specific meaning of co and unco, the wholesale encirclement in the terminology of uh, contemporary international relations. A brainchild of a U.S. diplomat to the former Soviet Union, Mr. George Cannon, put forward in a Six World Secret Telegram to the White House in 1960s, 1940s. The term became the hallmark of U.S.-Soviet policy in 40 years of Cold War. 
but a wholesale, but a wholesale encirclement cannot be Washington's China policy. A thing not allowed by its economic interdependency with Beijing after 40 years of interaction, a thing never seen in U.S.-Soviet ties during the Cold War years, when the world was cut into two mutually independent markets. Now, is it uh, something rational for the U.S. cards? Dr. Henry Kissinger let the cat out of the bag years ago by listing three simple reasons. First, Washington cannot possibly prevent China, such a big country on the moon, from achieving prosperity. Second, in doing so, Washington needs to assemble many countries to do the same. But where can so many cat paws be available in the modern times? Regionally, trends uh, probably will continue to pull countries in two directions. China economically, but uh, towards the United States and each other for security. They would uh, hate being forced into making a choice between the two. Third, rivalry or co and uh, cooperation now exists in bilateral ties. No one can say for sure what lies ahead. It is entirely probable for two parties to avoid doing going to war. If Washington should impose containment upon Beijing, then it would become a self-fulfilling prof <coughs> prophecy for China to be an enemy, not something desired by the United States. The interdependency of the two economies, the interconnected uh, rivalry and the collaboration, the specific meaning invested in containment, and the strategic uh, moves employed by the Washington to cope with the challenges from China's rise. Or is all this determine the, that I just suggest advice and we should be very cautious to use the word containment. So probably checking is the right word. A high-risk historic transition. We are at a significant high-risk historic transition, spanning roughly the second decade of the 21st century. Its unique importance uh, comes from the key transition from quantitative accumulation to uh, qualitative transformation in the international landscape. The big power relation structure in particular. The qualitative changes are in fact uh, tectonic uh, transformations uh, characterized, characterized uh, notably with uh, imbalances and the uh, disorder. Imbalances uh, in power structure increasingly ill suited to the new reality and the chaotic uh, scenes that meet the eye across the world. For all nations, keeping things under control is the common domination, dominator, is the common denominator. In a sense, basic uh, stability in world economic, political, and the security situation constitutes the consensus, or rather, the foundation for collaboration among big powers. All parties are hopeful that the transition and the transformation can be accomplished within control, including avoidance of confrontation in the course of uh, rivalry. This implies to a certain context uh, explorations for ways to ensure long-term peaceful coexistence among big powers. The tectonic change involve high risks. The eruption of the financial economic crisis caught all parties unprepared for the move up 
in transition. That was uh, expedited mm. and aware. This led to sudden, exa sudden exacerbation in differences and uh, contradictions in state relations and brought into high relief strategic competition among heavy weights with anxiety, fears, and tensions bred from dramatic changes in power balance thick in the air. Uproar of ultra-nationalism, radical nationalism, or narrow nationalism is an academic term can be heard everywhere. Personally, I would take nationalism a neutral term as a normal expression of the consciousness of a nation state. That is why the Chinese often use the positive word patriotism instead. Indeed, people give vent to strong emotions only when ultra or extreme nationalist views are aired. As the luck would have it, a domestically political and social transition is also underway in most of the nations across the world. Diplomatic readjustment coupled with domestic <coughs> political economic transition only greatly compound issues in an interwoven external internal tangle with mounting heated debates going on within practically every nation. China is now witnessing an explosion of unprecedented pluralism of interests with pressure of public opinion on government decision making brought about by the openness of an information society. The difficulty in building consensus gives birth to short-term behavior behind not a few political processes, with decisions sometimes the outcome of compromises among ideas from the perspective of different interests. Naturally, uncertainties, unpredictability, and a variety of possibilities abound at such a moment. The battle of wits among nations is over their ability to capture the mega trends, the endurance of internal and external pressures, capabilities for internal accommodation, and for rapid, uh, rapid response. China's foreign policy in the new era. China is rising like a towering tree that catches the wind and which will not yield no matter how hard the tree craves calm. In fact, the country has uh, evolved into political, economic, and the strategic focus of international relations. The report of the October 2012 18th National Party Congress says that uh, we are still in a period of strategic opportunity. But the points out at the same time that changes are underway in its conditions and uh, implications. This is Chinese way of expression. Once an official version, the period, the call and the unquote, in this case, has been established in China, the central authorities seldom change it lest the groundless gas uh, would be indulged in by observers at home and abroad. But to adapt to the transform the situation, we may give a new interpretation to the older version. The period of, of strategic opportunity can be interpreted to mean that no major incidents or problems have yet occurred in our internal external environment that are serious enough to block China's peaceful development. Overall, the global economic, political, and the strategic situation is still beneficial for our continued 
pursuit of state development strategy centered on economic construction. If we insist on highlighting the time span implied in the wording here, then we may well suppose the current decline of the status of America, Europe, and Japan triggered by the global financial and economic crisis and China's ascendancy will persist for some time. Such an up-down vector may provide China with some opportunities, but it has also entailed many challenges and headaches. So it would be more proper to call the current period uh, one of both opportunities and challenges. The most serious post-war global financial and economic crisis have pushed China onto the center of the world stage unprepared. Under such a grave global economic situation, the challenges side stands out cons conspicuously outweighing the opportunity. It is a horse of another color to say that we can always try to turn challenges into opportunities on our own initiative. The new international situation in the country's unprecedented international standing require that China have a corresponding top-level design for a global political security strategy. In the past, when China was weak, the political strategic game, side, uh, political and strategic game side of China, of China policy of the Western powers was considered to insignificance. In the change situation, the lack of an overall clear-cut top-level design for China's uh, diplomatic and uh, security strategy is strongly felt when a strong internal coordination is needed to cope, is needed in coping with uh, heated games. As a result, we run the risk of doing one thing at the expense of the other to the possible extent of pursuing partial interests at the expense of the overall ones. Such a top-level design demands a definite definition of China's role as a major power in the multipolar order in the globalization era. This calls for providing guiding answers on the level of strategic and the policy thinking to the relationship between China's peaceful rights and the building a new international order. In other words, this asks for shifting the thought and the practice of China's foreign policy from its own modern drive to its regional and the global implications because the future of China and that of the world are more closely linked up than ever before. Just as it is the case with domestic affairs, so it is with foreign. Economics in this space in which politics, the superstructure is built. The crux of China's foreign strategy is a guiding political design based on realistic international relations. The world's number two caught China unprepared, both domestically and uh, diplomatically. But we cannot and should not uh, flinch from the challenge. Instead, uh, we should uh, face up to the reality courageously. Two interconnected dimensions in China's strategic thinking in the new era merit our close attention. Sino-US relations and uh, Asian Pacific affairs, common exploration with uh, Washington for ways to build a new type of relations is a significant formulation that uh, reflects China's diplomatic thinking in the new era. It was Vice President Xi Jinping who first made the 
proposal during his uh, February 2012 American visit, which received uh, an enthusiastic uh, echo from the other side. Despite the lack of yet of a common substantive wording for the new type of relations, both sides already share the following views. The bilateral relationship that is of global influence is built not on common enemies, but on common interests. The growing interdependence uh, far outweigh the big differences in political system, ideology, history, culture, and the way of thinking. Neither side can expect the other to tone its uh, footprints and the confrontation would demand a prohibitive price. Peaceful coexistence is the only optimal option that uh, suits the best interests of the two sides and uh, conform to the hope of the overwhelming majority of other nations. Hindersight shows that the principle of seeking common ground while reserving differences, quote and unquote, has proved to be an important experience for the two capitals to expand their ties in basic uh, stability over the past 40 years. The strategic uh, competition side in bilateral links, however, has surfaced thanks to the entanglement or disturbance from each other's domestic uh, politics or the third party. The resulting larger uncertainties of the future require injection of stronger positive energy to ensure a correct direction for the bilateral bonds. Here comes into the picture the exploration of a new type of bilateral relationship it uh, transcends the principle of seeking common ground while reserving differences, and uh, therefore is uh, possessive of more positive implications of policy thinking and the goals. The next step is to face up to real problems and attempt to translate positive thinking into policies, approaches, and the measures of practical meaning by departing from an uh, overarching vision grasping vital issues and uh, taking impressive measures. Lack of mutual trust represents a glaring issue that uh, impairs expansion of cooperation between the two shores of the Pacific Ocean. The breakthrough demands a joint political decision of the two leaderships for a mutual beneficial situation of uh, interaction of uh, Virtuous circle of a virtuous circle. Both sides should work together for the bright future of uh, strategic uh, collaboration through pioneering ideas and uh, thoughts by overcoming the fatalist belief of uh, irreconcil irreconcilability between a rising and uh, an established power propagated by in the prevalent uh, realist doctrine and the policy thoughts of international politics. For this, it is of vital significance for expanding bilateral strategic and mutual trust by striving for engaging in competition in a non-zero sum or positive zero sum manner. History seems to have offered us with uh, promising opportunity China has just accomplished a successful leadership, successful leadership transition with the new team showing determination to write a new shining chapter for China's peaceful rise. The new lineup of the second tenure of the Obama administration and his State of the Union message demonstrated his pursuit of great achievements in the days ahead. Undoubtedly, avoidance of a zero-sum rivalry in search of greater teamwork is of crucial importance for fulfilling the goals of both sides. It is this spirit 
that the preparations for the forthcoming 2013 China-US high-level economic and strategic dialogue should be made so that a new positive outlook of openness can guide the future bilateral ties. In the multipolar context of the globalization era, the intensified bilateral strategic rivalry derived from China's rise presents only one side of the coin. There is the other side. To the coin of China's rise, it could also promote broader strategic collaboration that not only better serve the long-term interests of both sides, but also meets the obligatory responsibility of the two great powers towards the peace and the development of the world. Let us keep our fingers crossed. Thank you very much. <laughs>